have a record of it. Okay. Okay, so does anybody have any questions over the review itself? I know you didn't get to see, I don't think you got to see number one, right? Um, what about the homework? I just finished my homework yesterday, so I don't know if any of y'all have finished your homework. This one? Yes. Mm hmm. So I was working through the homework sets that I assigned you guys last week. And I finished yesterday. So for substitution method, mm -hmm. uh, number seven on the homework, mm -hmm. it's dy dx equals y minus x. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Maybe you're too fast. <laughs> That's 2.5, is it? Yeah, yes. yeah. Okay, say it again. dy dx equals y minus x, y plus x. Who's that about? Over? Over y plus x. Over y plus x, gotcha. Okay, yes. Does it matter which? Nope. It's not going to matter. Mm -mm. And I did it both ways in the solutions, just so you could see. It doesn't. I think there's one that's easier, but it doesn't matter. I always go with Y. If I, it's a, to make a decision, I go with Y. And the only reason I always go with Y is because my writing, I can distinguish between U's and X's really easily. But when I start doing U's and Y's, it could get a little messy. <laughs> so I usually go with Y equal to UX as my substitution. Just, that's just my default. Do you want me to do it or do you want me to, you got the idea or you want to try it? That was the main question. I didn't come up with the exact answer, but I got pretty close. So yeah, if you don't mind doing it. Sure. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just do the Y equal to UX and the DY would then be first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Some people memorize these, I don't. I just do product rule and I get the other one right. So let's see, we're gonna get u dx plus x du over dx equal to ux minus x over ux plus x. Well, I definitely can't have fractions if I'm trying to separate it, right? At least not when I'm trying to get the du's and the dx's by themselves. So I am going to have to cross multiply. But I have to be careful because I have two terms here times two terms in this denominator. And then over here I have two terms but only times dx. feel like, or maybe I can just use the camera. On the video, it's not too bad of a size, but up there, it looks like it's really tiny. There we go, that might be better. Okay. Over here, it looks giant now on the computer, but <laughs> at least it'll look a little bit better on the board. Okay, so here I'm going to have the foil. So this times this, which is u squared x dx. This times this, which is ux dx, this times this, which is ux dx, this times this, which is x squared du, this times this, which is ux dx, this times this, which is x dx. I think I'm going to move the two terms on the right hand side over to the left instead of trying to get dx's on one side and du's on the other side. Just because I don't want to have to turn all these guys negative if I move them over, right? So let's move this one over. I'm going to do minus ux dx on both sides. I am. Um, don't. Yes, I am. This one right here. Oh, and I'm missing something else too, aren't I? 
that's going to make a big difference. And I had to do a couple of problems over because when I'm doing this, I make those mistakes. So this times ux should be u, x squared, and then du. And then this times this is x squared and then du. Well, luckily when I wrote the term down, I wrote it underneath the correct one, right? Because <laughs> originally that one looked a lot like it. Okay, so I'm going to minus this term over, but then I have to minus it over here too. And we get lucky because they cancel from both, right? But then I'm also going to move this term over, and it's not exactly like any of these other ones. So I'm just going to put it here, but it cannot combine with this one. So let me rewrite the whole thing. As I rewrite, I'm going to try to put the x's and the u's together. So the dx's, I'm going to put u squared x dx minus x dx. And then the du's, I'm going to put over here. You could have also chosen to put the du's in the front and then the dx's in the back. It's not going to make a difference. It's just one term in front of the other after you integrate. It makes no difference. But I've got to try to separate them. So I definitely want to factor them. And then once I factor them, hopefully I can just divide by stuff and they'll be separable. Okay. So I noticed that both of these have an x dx in common. So I'm going to factor it out. If I do, on this term I end up with u squared. What do I end up with in the second term? This times what is going to give me negative x dx? Mm -hmm. So make sure that when you distribute that you are getting these two terms. Okay. Now on the right hand side they have what in common? What do these two terms have in common? Mm -hmm. And if I factor that out, I end up with what? Mm -hmm. And so then I can divide by stuff to separate them. Over here, I need to divide by the x squared. And over here, I need to get rid of the u part. So I need to divide by u squared minus 1. So then the u squared minus 1's cancel here. One of these reduce as well, don't they? I end up with 1 over x dx. Here the x squared's reduce, but I end up with u plus 1 over u squared minus 1. And then 0 divided by anything is still just 0. Now when you have squareds in your denominator, I'm, this is going back to Cal 2, just strategies from Cal 2. Um, when you have a u squared in the denominator, you want to separate the fractions because anything that has a u, if you have u squared down here, anything that has a u up there is probably going to convert to an ln. But the constants over square are probably going to turn into one of your arc um, trig functions, like arc sine, arc cosine, arc tangent, or inverse sine, inverse cosine, inverse tangent, whichever way you're used to saying that. Okay, so I'm going to separate those before I integrate. I'm going to have u over u squared minus 1 and then 1 over u squared minus 1. Now the x's is easy. What is the integral of 1 over x? ln of x. This one, when I try to integrate it, is not as easy. What is the integral of 0? doesn't even matter what variable you're integrating with respect to. 
it's just going to be a constant okay because the derivative of a constant is always zero here what I want to do what is the derivative of u squared minus 1 to you but I only have u right so I can put the 2 there but if I do I have to put a 1 half on the outside to make it so that it's still equivalent to what it was right you can't just throw in numbers otherwise you're not talking about the same problem so if I put a 2 in there I gotta take a 2 out right and then I have this denominator underneath its derivative which means that will be the ln of u squared minus 1. Here though is one of your tangents. I don't know which one. Um, tan, inverse. tan inverse? I think it is. And it should just be u over 1 which is just u, right? <coughs> okay, and I don't think they do much once they they might simplify it a little bit because the problem should not have u's in it, right? If y was equal to ux, what is u? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to plug in y over x everywhere I see a u. Okay, and then what do we do from here? We do ln of x. Actually, I'm going to multiply everybody by 2 because I don't like the fraction. I have 2 ln of x plus ln of y squared over x squared minus 1 plus 2 tan inverse of y over x equal does it matter if I multiply by 2? It's still going to be a big fat constant, right? I think I know what is the problem with this one. Your tan inverse part is not the same as what's in the back of the book, right? We'll, we'll get to it in a minute. Oh. Okay. Here I'm going to put the square back up there. So I'm going to have ln of x squared. Here I'm going to get a common denominator, so x squared over x squared. And then if you put these together, a plus sign means you multiply the arguments. I have no idea what the back of the book has, but y squared minus x squared plus 2 tan inverse of y over x equals to c. Is that what they have in the back of the book? Or do they have tan inverse of x over y? Because one of them you get this and the other one you get x over y. And they are still equivalent to each other, and I'll talk about why in a minute. It's got y over x. It's got y over x? Okay. So if you use y equal to ux, it'll come out to look exactly the way it looks in the book. If you had chose to use x equal uy, you're going to get the same thing. But you're going to end up with x over y. Okay. And these two are equivalent to each other because there is a property that says tan inverse of y over x is equal to pi over 2 minus tan inverse of x over y. There's a property that states that. Okay. And because of that, I can manipulate this one or this one. I could go backwards. I could go either way. If you want to turn that one into that one, then all I would have to do is minus the pi over 2, right?
and then divide by a negative. So I end up with pi over 2 minus tan inverse of y over x. It doesn't really matter. So this right here becomes pi over 2 minus tan inverse of y over x. And then if I distribute it, I get pi minus 2 tan. And then if I minus the pi over, or maybe it was plus. I can't remember. But anyway, this will still just be a C. And so you still have the 2 tan inverse of y over x. But there's something else going on. Oh, I think you end up with this. That's what it is. You end up with a negative there when you do x equal to uy. So I have a negative. When I distribute, it'll become negative pi and a positive 2. And then you have to add pi. And that's still a c. And you still have a plus there. Okay. So if you use the other one, it's fine. You'll still be able to get the same thing. But who on earth is going to think of this, right? Property. <laughs> So that's usually the question I get whenever it comes to inverse functions. They get one that looks kind of like the one in the back, but it's not exactly, but it, usually it can be manipulated. Just ask if you get stuff like that, where you're like, I got this, but the book says it's that. Ask me, because yours might be equivalent to what's in the book, okay? It's just nobody thinks of things like this. I didn't either. I literally went and looked it up. I'm like. It has y over x over here, but I have x over y. Is there a way to convert it? And then I looked to see if there was a way to convert it, and I found this property. Any other ones you see? That you might have had questions over? So just to summarize, I'm going to write the homework problems down. Just so that you can make sure that you have them all right when you're turning them in. These problems are short, that's why there's a whole bunch, right? A lot more vocabulary. I'm not trying to hear my own voice, I just want to see what the last homework set is. There it is. Oh, 
there it is. 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 11, 14, and 26. This one still says unavailable for some reason. I'm going to have to fix that one. Does anybody have that homework section from when we were in class? 2.4? I have no idea why it's telling me that that one's unavailable. Let me go check. That one is the linear section. So the one that had all of those e to the whatever. Processing abandoned video failed to upload. What? Okay, well, I'm gonna do it again then. That's it. Let me go make sure it's it before I click on it. <laughs> so I think it's this one. Okay, hopefully that'll fix that one. So it will be in your thing correctly. Dun, dun, dun. And nobody even emailed me and said, hey miss, this isn't working. Normally somebody does. <laughs> catch something that happened okay as soon as it gives me the code I can put it in there There's one more. Oh, three more. 22, 24, and 27. Oops. There we go. So how many is that total? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Eight. Okay, 
11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So how many is that total? 15, 25, 31, 41, 52, maybe. Okay, that video is almost done loading, but we'll go back here. So make sure you have all of those. So it should be about 16, 10, 6, 8, 11, and 7. is not bad if you took pre-cal it's probably like hundreds of problems you're doing <laughs> in one unit it's not too bad and i didn't give you too too many of the substitution ones because they're long i don't remember what sick 2.2 is about but that one seems to be the shortest one there were lots of in the exact method though the 2.4 just because i need you to get in the hang of those were the hard ones. Those are the ones that you had to integrate with respect to a certain variable. And then you had to compare what you got on the two ends, right? So just so that you had more and more practice with those, that's why there's a bunch of them in that section. That way, no matter what you see on the review or what you see on the test, that they're not anything for you. Um, the level of difficulty that you see on the review is the same level of difficulty that there is on the test. I'm not gonna be throwing anything crazy difficult at you just because you have two hours, okay? Um, I'd rather you use that two hours just to be confident that you have what you're gonna submit is good, okay? And you can always check your answers, right? If you solve for y and you get y equals whatever, you could take a derivative, plug the derivative, plug the original back into the DE you were given and see if it comes out, left side equals right side. So you can, you'll know whether or not your problems are correct. Are there any other questions about any other ones you saw? No? Need some time to see, let it soak in? <laughs> Marinate? <laughs> okay, well, the word finished a little bit early, but that's okay. It happens on review day and test day. Um, so if you don't have any other questions for me, you guys are free to go. Um, and if you do have some questions, you just don't want to ask them out loud, you can hang back and I'll be here. But that's it. That's all I'm going to cover. No more for chapter two. We're done. It's your time to shine now. <laughs> yes. Oh, thank you. I am still recording. <laughs>